Our community is very isolated. Having good internet has always been a struggle. Having Starlink, we feel spoiled now because we can do whatever we want. There's only three pieces of equipment. You know, there's a router, a dish, and a big long cable. These dishes connect to internet providing satellites that have been launched into space like this. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. The system is called Starlink, and it's the new, much hyped satellite internet service from Elon Musk's SpaceX. It looks like a UFO on a stick. There's just two instructions, and they can be done in either order. Uh, point at sky, plug in. Instead of using underground cords and cables, Starlink uses low-orbiting satellites to bring internet to remote communities. That's all 60 of those Starlink satellites. One of the first communities? The Macaw Reservation on the northwestern tip of Washington state. It's about 170 miles west of Seattle and two hours from the closest Walmart. Since Starlink is still in limited testing, we traveled to this remote corner of the U.S. to talk to a number of beta testers and put Starlink to the test to see if it's really the solution to the global broadband gap. Most residents who have internet connectivity here deal with slow speeds and service that falters during bad weather. I have CenturyLink for my house. I can't access Zoom meetings and that's part of my work, and I can't do that. It'll crash. I've tried it a few times, okay. and it crashes. I play this game, and it's called Cookie Jam, and it takes about five, five minutes to get going. You can play like about three levels, and then it will stop. Get into that split position. Remember, front foot out. Weight on the ball of your foot. Yep, back heels up just slightly. Up the street from Cindy, Starlink beta tester Glenn Ellis isn't only video calling, he's live streaming personal training sessions. And then your hips are gonna move backwards, okay, as you lower down. And then you're gonna come back up nice and aggressive, squeeze your butt really hard. I'm gonna add some more weight. Okay. I work for the Macaw Tribe organization first. Um, I'm the preventative health director. In my off time, I'm a personal trainer. I run a personal training program online. In order to be more profitable and have a bigger reach, I need to be able to expand to other communities. Five of them, here we go. But with the internet limitations, it wasn't possible. The, the biggest things that we're able to do is have multiple heavy usage uh, devices on the, the internet at once. Nice job. Yep. This is only a two gigabyte video file, but you know, with our old speeds, it would have been impossible to, to upload. Down the hill from Glenn, Jason Roberts is also psyched about faster upload speeds. He makes a living doing audio and video production. We asked Jason and his family to use multiple data heavy devices at the same time while Jason reviewed a YouTube video he shot and edited. Years and years and years. His toddler son Hunter watched cartoons, all while his wife Stella made a FaceTime call. Hey, Mom. And his other sons played a data-hungry video game that they simultaneously streamed to YouTube. Oh, I'll get pickaxe. Starlink seemed to hold up just fine. Over the course of a few days, we asked Glenn and Jason to run a bunch of speed tests. Plugged into his router, Jason got download speeds around 148 megabits per second and upload speeds of 13.6 megabits per second. That's still below the US average, which is 180 megabits per second for downloads and 66 megabits per second for uploads. But it's far faster than CenturyLink, the main internet service provider on the reservation, which saw download speeds barely above one megabits per second and an upload speed of 0.50 megabits per second. Still, Starlink seems to be the best option around so how does it bring internet to the middle of nowhere? The Starlink dishes that dot the Macaw Reservation connect to low-orbiting satellites that fly about 550 kilometers above Earth. According to SpaceX, that's over 60 times closer to Earth than the geosynchronous orbits used by some of its competitors. This minimizes the delay of the signal from the space satellites to the end users who receive internet service. 
That's what enables Starlink's internet speeds to be faster than previous satellite internet service providers, like HughesNet and Viasat. But there's a downside to that closer proximity to Earth. It means way more satellites floating around. Starlink's constellation of satellites will likely have to grow into the tens of thousands to meet Elon Musk's goal of providing internet service around the globe. Uh, right now, the range has given us a green light for launch. In the meantime, questions about the viability and repercussions of Starlink's mission are beginning to bubble up. SpaceX did not respond to questions we raised about Starlink. Check this out, Starlink. The biggest issue with Starlink may be the cost. For those with limited financial resources, it's a barrier. New customers pay almost $500 in initial equipment fees. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the hype is real. Then there's a $99 monthly fee for the service. It's the $500 that I couldn't afford right now at this moment. The cost is definitely a barrier for many, especially in our community. We have a really high unemployment rate during uh, non-tourist uh, season. Some people don't have any income for a large portion of the year due to seasonal work. There's, you know, there's logging and then there's fishing. In Nia Bay, where most residents on the Macaw Reservation live, the poverty rate is around 30%, according to 2019 Census Bureau figures. That compares to 10.5% nationally. In fact, the poverty rate in most rural counties across the U.S. is 16.3%. The Macaw Tribe is exploring ways to bring better internet to the reservation at low cost. But for now, most residents have access through either DSL or geostationary satellite providers. Today in Nia Bay, it'll be rainy, with a forecasted high of 47 and a low of 44. So far, weather hasn't been a problem for two of the Starlink families we visited. Other beta testers haven't had such luck. Terry DeBeau lives just outside the reservation. She teaches Head Start and signed up for Starlink after classes went online due to the pandemic. I don't know if it's because of the trees and the mountain behind me, if it's rainy, if it's cloudy, or if it's windy, my service isn't that good. And I get dropped off my Zoom calls. I'm, you know, gonna continue to use it, but I wish it was more consistent. Technical support is also an issue for some. Starlink has a chat box for tech support, but there isn't a phone number and the company doesn't send out technicians. Jason Roberts frequently makes house calls to neighbors with Starlink to help troubleshoot issues ranging from bill payment to dish placement. I reached out to a lot of community members and helped people get set up with Starlink. I've done about four installs so far. One of the biggest reasons that we really need good internet access here in Nia Bay is that we're so isolated here and we rely on internet for everything. I think our community can benefit from better internet for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is the opportunities here are not great for a lot of people. It's a small community and the funding is very limited to get kids experiences off of the reservation. Everybody knows that song. I know that's what she's saying though. And so sometimes, Kids don't know what they're interested in because they've never been exposed to it. I was camouflaged while I was doing that. Most people don't, you know, they don't know what they're missing without it. 